Welcome back to the agenda. Gold accounts for nearly 90% of all the value of all mineral production in Nevada, and two companies, Barrick and Newmont, account for more than 90% of that. And this chart, taken from information in corporate annual reports, shows that not only is Nevada more important to Barrick and Newmont than any other nation on Earth, Nevada is more important to Barrick and Newmont than any other continent on Earth. Meantime, Nevada's minerals industry pays a pittance in taxes compared to mineral industries in other states. For instance, mineral producers in Wyoming pay 6 or 7 percent in a gross severance tax, another 6 percent, that's gross, in county property taxes, again based on gross value, as I said, and in the case of coal, oil, and natural gas produced on public lands, mineral industries in Wyoming pay federal mineral royalties. The total tax burden in Wyoming on a mineral producer can be as high as 25 or even 30 percent of the value of production. In Nevada, by contrast, gold producers pay a mere 5 percent, and that's on net, not gross, after hundreds of millions of dollars have been deducted from the value of the gold. Nevada's tax rate is set in the Constitution. Monty Miller, normally a severely anti-tax crusader, has filed a petition to raise that rate from 5 percent to 9 percent. And the mining industry this week filed papers in court trying to declare the petition itself unconstitutional because the last thing transnational mining conglomerates want is to let actual Nevadans have a say in mining tax policy. Joining me to discuss all of this is Michael Ginsburg of the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada, another group, of course, that has fought long and hard to raise taxes on the mining industry. The industry comes out, files a brief in court, hoping that they can get this thing thrown out so that the voters don't have any kind of uh, say in their policy. Of course, we've seen this movie before. Of course. Um, what, uh, what, what is the industry's argument now with respect to why, well, the voters shouldn't be allowed to have a say in this? Uh, well, you know, I, I, there's a, a few important distinctions here, Hugh, and, and certainly you touched on it. I, I think that um, the fact that the mining industry here pays on net proceeds and not gross proceeds, as, as you uh, alluded to in, in your intro there, I think that that's something people need to keep in mind as they're looking at this issue. Mm -hmm. The mining industry now, um, um, as you said, it is, is now facing another uh, initiative to increase their, their taxes upwards of 9%. Um, practically doubling their 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 right. taxes to which isn't enough by the way it, exactly it, it puts it at just under probably a net effect still rate be of much 1%. much less than what the industry what minerals industry pay in other states like absolutely Wyoming, even even if it was doubled absolutely but, but but this initiative the one thing that that the mining industry really isn't uh, being honest about here is that it, it doesn't say that the legislature has to do this right what it does is that it it enables the legislature to do this should they decide and, and this is not dissimilar, though, to legislation that was passed last year during the legislative session that uh, by which would basically take the mining language that is in the Constitution, where it has no right being in the first place, to take it out of there. Absolutely. Uh, this seems to set up two competing tracks. To, to go after these guys. How, do, how does this work? Are they competing? Are they complementary? You know, it, it is something that we're monitoring and we're not entirely sure how this is going to work out. Of course, I'm not an attorney, but, uh, you know, we're, there, there is some concern that, you know, having this ballot initiative being voted on uh, by the people at the same time that, that another initiative that's been sent to us from the legislature is being voted on the people, right. that there'll be some sort of a conflict there. Right. Um, you know, the bottom line, at the, the end of the day, is the legislature and the people of Nevada, I think we've all, we're all in agreement here. The mining industry has no place in our constitution, period. And that needs to, to move forward and they need to come out of our constitution. Yes, and we yes. need to have them pay a tax, you know, comparable to what other industries here Absolutely. pay, like the gaming industry. All right, our discussion, we're going to pick this up in a minute. We have to take a break right now. Mike Ginsburg will back with me, will be back with me right after this. Welcome back to the agenda. Our guest today is Mike Ginsburg of the Progressive Leadership Alliance of Nevada. We are discussing fairness, economic justice, and the obvious yet too often unrecognized truth that corporations at bottom really aren't that into you. 
There's nothing along those lines. <laughs> Listen, Michael, I want to move on to the mining uh, in, a, in a minute, but one last thing I want to ask you. Obviously, as I'd mentioned before, and I guess I should have pointed out that I have worked on this issue, and we have actually worked together on this. I guess I should disclose that uh, in the past, although it's been a while. But uh, with respect to the petition that Miller is putting out, mm -hmm. um, is Plan going to be supporting that? Have you had contact with him? I mean, normally you're not people that would basically be in the same room together, but is this a case of strange bedfellows? We tend not to run in the same circles. Uh, you know, Monty Miller, um, from our understanding, has never really met a tax that, that he liked um, or a revenue enhancement that he liked. Um, so we, we haven't taken a position on this particular initiative yet, mm -hmm. and we have yet to, to really sit down and, and talk to him about this. Um, as you know, we're, we're always looking for ways to make sure that the mining industry is, is held accountable and does pay a fair share here in Nevada. So it is something we're monitoring and it you know we are very much open to to sitting down and meeting with him to discuss yeah. this there's um, you know a, a lot of other issues on the table as well there's talk of a broad-based business tax which certainly plan long uh, long overdue long overdue long overdue certainly plan um, will will most likely support on on some level yeah you guys will be working with the with the AFL CIO and, and the other groups who are Absolutely. pursuing that yeah well good for you because that is as you say long long overdue um, I want to skip shift gears a minute and go into another subject that you've been working hard on and the plan has been working hard on and that is the foreclosure and the underwater homes here in Nevada and such. Um, the foreclosure settlement that was announced by the state attorneys general and the federal government, uh, was it last week, the week before I guess? Yes. You had been urging the state AGs to hold firm, to not cave into the banks. Uh, you were concerned that the federal government, that Attorney General Holder was going to cave. Now we've had this decision and you guys are, I don't want to mischaracterize it, but you're kind of like on the one hand it's okay, but on the other hand maybe not so good. It, we're cautiously optimistic, of course. Um, you know, it, to, to borrow a phrase from one of my colleagues, Laura Martin, um, what this settlement really represents is a down payment. On this, on this issue, on the foreclosure crisis. Well, and that gets to the key thing that you like about this, and that is that there's nothing in there that prohibits states or consumers or anyone else, for that matter, from going after the banks further in court, right? Absolutely. There, there was talk of blanket immunity right. as, as these talks were happening, and, and much to our cre her credit, uh, our state's AG, uh, Catherine Cortez Masto, was one of, one of as you know, the, the last holdouts to sign off on this thing, and that yeah. was something that was really important to her because because at the end of the day, it was how is she going to protect Nevada homeowners and how is she going to bring relief to Nevadans now, not right. you know in, in, in some undefined term. But is that relief adequate in the settlement? Is it, is it adequate? No, no. Um, but what this does, it's important for people to remember, this doesn't, this isn't a settlement of the entire foreclosure crisis. By any this means. Is, this is a settlement on the most egregious practices by the mortgage service industry and only by the top banks here yeah. so what this settlement is meant to do is to bring relief to the homeowners who were forced out of their homes due to robo signing um, you know not following proper procedure um, so that's what this is designed to do the, right. the other great thing that this does um, one of the, the big benefits here um, is that, that it it um, puts in place some standards for the mortgage servicing industry. And well, that would be a change. Absolutely. This is the first time in, in the history, <laughs> you know, where these guys have actually had some yeah, standards. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's going to go a long way in protecting people in the future. All right. Well, you know, it's wise to point out that this is by no means any kind of silver bullet to that problem. Correct. Listen, just the time we have, just a few seconds left, but I want to say from somebody from the left, What's your reaction to Raggio's legacy in the legislature? What's your assessment of it? Um, you know, at, at, it's hard to follow up uh, our good friend, Senator Bryan, um, who puts things so eloquently. Yeah. Um, but I had a conversation this morning with our lobbyist, Jan Gilbert, who, um, as you may know, worked with Senator yes, Raggio yes, for yes, of course. close to two decades in the legislature. Um, and throughout this, you know, Plan, Plan yeah. and Senator Raji have not always been on the same no, side he, of the but he could issue. always work with people. He, he, could always he was work always with the respectful and he was very right. well respected and, right. and he will be missed. Michael, thanks so much for coming in. Thank I you. really appreciate it. We're going to have to leave that there, but we'll have you back another time. Hey, we asked and you wrote and I will share some of your comments about the agenda when I come back right after this.